I'm Dr. George Sho, interventional pulmonologist at Providence St. John's Medical Center here in Santa Monica, California. We have a comprehensive lung program at St. John's. Today, we witnessed a navigational bronchoscopy procedure, which has allowed us to biopsy small peripheral lung nodules. And this has really changed the approach to these lung nodules in a tremendous way over the past six to seven years since the technology was introduced. We can biopsy lung nodules in a minimally invasive way with a low risk of bleeding or pneumothorax and a very high yield of getting a diagnosis, about 90% chance of getting a diagnosis when you combine that tool together with other imaging modalities such as radial EBUS and co beam CT scan. So lung cancer screening is recommended for individuals uh, between the ages of 50 to 80 who have a 20-pack uh, year history of smoking or more, or who are current smokers, and have quit within the past 15 years. So uh, that's the demographic where lung cancer screening has been shown to make a difference in terms of long-term survival. And the difference really is in early diagnosis of lung cancer. So lung cancer screening has been able, has been demonstrated to shift the diagnosis from later stages, which is where lung cancer traditionally has been diagnosed as stage three or stage four disease when it becomes symptomatic, to an earlier stage, stage one or two, where when patients are typically asymptomatic, they don't know that they have a problem until you look for it and you find it on a CT scan. And that's why lung cancer screening has become so important for early stage diagnosis because the earlier we diagnose with lung cancer, the better the prognosis and the long-term survival. Hi, my name is Carolyn Prina. I'm a physician assistant. Um, I work here at St. John's Pulmonary Clinic. I work closely with our physicians here, um, and I'll be responsible for doing screening for anyone that may qualify for lung cancer screening, um, and I'll serve as the um, PA navigator for this program. So um, if you do qualify for lung cancer screening, then you'll come here on site and get a low-dose chest CT scan done um, just down the hall from where our clinic is located, and we'll typically have you meet with myself and our physicians on the day of uh, to review those CT scan images, um, go through your history more in depth, and then kind of decide from there what next steps are appropriate for scanning. Um, if there are no abnormalities found, then um, typically the next scan would be a year from now, but otherwise we would get you to the appropriate you know, um, modalities and other specialties if there are any abnormalities found at that time. If we find something that needs to be acted upon, even if it's just continued observation, that's something we can do through our comprehensive uh, lung program as well. If a nodule looks suspicious enough that it needs to be biopsied, then I do those lung biopsies uh, with the navigation bronchoscopy procedure that you saw today. Or we can refer a patient to our interventional radiologist for a CT guided biopsy if that's the more appropriate procedure. Or if it looks like something that really needs to be resected, if it's high enough risk, then we can refer those patients to one of our thoracic surgeons and one of our oncologists. So everything's under the one umbrella here at the same institution. So it's relatively easy to refer patients to other specialists that need to see those patients. A lung cancer screening study can be ordered by any physician, really. Primary care physician, pulmonologist, oncologist, anybody who's involved in the care of an individual who's at risk. Most lung cancer screening programs are managed by pulmonologists because they are linked to a, a lung nodule program as well. Uh, so if you find something on a CT scan that's potentially uh, suspicious for a lung cancer, those patients can be followed in a lung nodule program uh, longitudinally. Uh, with continued observation or decision to pursue a biopsy or a resection. And typically pulmonologists are involved in making those decisions uh, together with other specialists like oncologists, primary care physicians, and thoracic surgeons. It can be very fast actually. Um, when we do one of the biopsies um, through navigation bronchoscopy or if it's a CT guided biopsy, usually we get, get results back within days. Once we have that back, we can make a referral to a medical oncologist or a thoracic surgeon. They can typically see the patient within days to weeks, which is plenty of time um, to do something definitive about a new diagnosis of a lung cancer. And the other thing that's important about making a diagnosis of lung cancer is also uh, obtaining mutation analysis or genomic testing. That takes several weeks to come back, but while that's happening, the patient can get plugged in with a cancer specialist, a thoracic surgeon, anybody else who needs to see that patient, including a radiation oncologist potentially, to get the therapeutic phase of the, of the patient's journey uh, going.
And I think it's uh, important to highlight the fact that the majority of patients who are candidates for lung cancer screening are not being screened. Uh, and California, in fact, ranks very low amongst the 50 states in lung cancer screening. Uh, the last statistics I looked at, we ranked 49th out of 50 states, which is pretty poor. And only uh, less than 10% of the patients who are eligible for lung cancer screening are actually being screened. So we have a lot of work to do to get the word out to primary care physicians, to individuals in the community, to know that lung cancer screening is important. It needs to be done for patients who are at risk because it really makes a difference in long-term survival from lung cancer, which is the leading cause of cancer death in this country. We're, we're certainly underdiagnosing early lung cancers because we're not screening enough patients. Eventually, you know, when patients with lung cancer will develop symptoms of their disease, but at that point, they're far more advanced and there's fewer treatment options. Certainly, curative therapy becomes much more difficult for advanced stage lung cancer. We are looking at getting involved in some clinical trials, uh, both for risk stratification as well as lung cancer screening and some therapeutics. Uh, we partner with other clinics like the Angelus Clinic, which is involved in a, in a number of therapeutic trials for lung cancer. And there are a lot of lung cancer uh, treatment trials going on nationally right now that we can refer patients to, even though we're not directly involved in those trials.